Hi guys, welcome again into another episode of our YouTube series. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about migration. So basically, we're going to be migrating from your Gmail personal account to Microsoft 365. I do get a lot of uh, messages, people asking me that, um, hey, can you do a video on how we can be able to migrate? from Gmail personal to Microsoft 365. Very easy and straightforward. So the first thing you need to do in this regard is one, you need to make sure that you have enabled two-factor authentication. So you need to verify that you've enabled two-factor authentication. And to do that, you will click on the Google apps at the top right, and then click on accounts, and then click on security, on the left-hand side. And then you need to ensure that the two-step verification is turned on. Okay, good, you can see my two fact my two-factor authentication is turned on right so that's the first thing you need to do you need to make sure that your two-factor authentication is turned on after that the next thing you're going to do is you need to go to your browser and then you type google app password and then you're going to click on the first one when you click on the first one you're going to see where it tells you create and manage app passwords because it is this app password that we are going to use to set up the migration endpoint which would in enable the migration so we'll just click on create a password and sign into my google app password portal i'm going to call this outlook and then i will click on create this is the app password so the next thing we're going to do now is to go to microsoft 365 i'm going to drag this to the other screen you go to admin.microsoft365.com and then you scroll down you click on exchange great exchange is open right so you just click on migration on the left click on migration all right when you click on migration you now click on add migration batch you're going to call this migration batch let's call it imap20 i mean i don't know i love to use unique numbers so we're going to select migration type imap migration next now there are a few things that you need to know about imap migration this is the only way to migrate your data or your email over from google personal account to microsoft 365 using imap migration that is if you decide not to use third party tool in order to follow this migration step for imap imap does not migrate contacts and calendar it only migrates your email so that is literally a limitation using IMAP. So you just click on next, create a new endpoint, click on next. What is going to be the endpoint name? Okay, so for the endpoint name, we are going to use A23. So for the endpoint name, we are going to use A23, which is going to be the name I'm going to use. I love to use unique names and numbers, okay? So I'll just click on next. And then for the IMAP server, I'm going to use imap.gmail.com. So it's going to be basic authentication. Encryption is going to be SSL, accept untrusted certificate, and then you click on next. So it's going to create the migration endpoint. It will create the migration endpoint, and then we'll click on next. And then when we click on next, you're going to see an option, download a CSV file with headers, download a CSV file, with headers and sample user information so let's follow with the first one i'm going to use the first one and then i just uh, downloaded it i will just open it direct from here these are the three columns so you need to understand what this column means now the email address means the destination location of the account you are migrating to so in this episode or in this video the destination location of the account we are migrating to happens to be migration at specspaceiq.com so we are migrating to this very email account this is the destination location at which we are migrating to so i'm going to just copy the email address so the email address section is a destination location the username section is the source location where you are migrating from so the email address of the source is T-H-U-K-W-U-E-Z-E-B-O-S-I at gmail.com. The app password that we generated, that will be what we are going to copy. Remember, we generated an app password. So that is it. I will just paste it here and then I will just click on save. You don't have to worry. At the top, you're going to see the save icon there at the top. Let me just show you real quickly so you can see this I the icon there. It is save icon. Look at it at the top here. Just click on save so i will just save and then close once we've done that the next thing we're going to do is to now import the csv file it's in my download i will just import it and this is it i'll just click on next click on next again this indicates the shadow of the migration so do you want the migration to start automatically do you want it to start manually 
okay or do you want to set a date and time for the migration to start let's say you want the migration to happen maybe during the on the last day of the week you can now set it at what time you want it so you don't need to be physically uh there to open up your laptop and all that the migration will just kick start on its own but in this situation i'm going to start the migration automatically so i will just click on automatic start and then no need to select your time zone if you want to that's fine but it doesn't matter so this part where you see the search it's saying after the batch is complete a report will be sent to the following recipients you must select at least one recipient to receive the report when the migration is completed you are going to get a report so it's telling you to put in the email address of the person who should receive the reports it could be the migration completed or migration completed with errors or anything okay so all you just need to do is to put in the email address by default it already selected my email which happens to be the administrator email so i'll just click on save so the migration is about to start in a couple of seconds good so migration creation successful I will just click on done and then we're going to wait for about 10 to 15 minutes okay for the migration to start now you need to understand something so it is validating which is the first step of the migration so once you initiate the migration there are three different status that is going to show you the first status is validating if we refresh this the next status we are going to see will be provisioning or syncing that is what we are going to see so let's refresh good so we are seeing syncing now okay so syncing means that the migration is about to commence in terms of the number of items that will be syncing from your gmail personal over to this very account in microsoft 365 also just like i had mentioned this is the microsoft website where it talked about the um the imap migration not being able to migrate your calendar contact and uh yeah just your calendar and contact and also it, it migrates a maximum of 500,000 items from a user's mailbox okay so this does not just uh, apply to gmail it applies to any form of imap server especially if you are maybe if you are migrating from uh godaddy webmail or you are migrating from Rackspace, or you are, migrating, you are migrating from Network Solutions, anywhere you are migrating from, right? As long as the number of items do not exceed 500,000, yes, the migration will be successful. I'm going to just pause the video right now, and then I'm going to come back once the migration is completed. Okay, guys, so you can see that the migration is now in progress right so you can see the data consistency score is showing perfect status is showing syncing and then the number of items synced so far is 3066 right so literally it means that the migration is going well so you have to, we have to wait for the migration it might take a couple of time or maybe minutes or maybe less than an hour to be able to complete its syncing status okay so if it's still showing syncing it means that there are items that are still syncing over to this account in microsoft 365 so you just have to give it some time but the good news is that the data consistency score which is which is the main status you should be looking out for during the migration process right so the data consistency score is showing as perfect which means that the migration is in good health and also the number of items synced is still increasing depending on the number of items you have at your google personal account so now let's head over to microsoft 365 and this is the account we are migrating to i will just click on mail on that mail we are going to check to know if the number of if the mailbox here is reflecting so yeah you can see 0.68 percent which is about 696.8 mb that have been migrated so far so the migration is currently in progress uh, just allow about 24 hours for the migration to complete and then everything should be good from your end so uh yeah that's all you need to know about the migration and remember once the migration is completed and everything is okay from your end and then when you come back all you just need to do is to now click on the migration accounts and then click on delete because if you don't delete you will keep getting spam emails going into your admin accounts okay 
highlighting this migration that is still in progress or that may have been completed okay all right thank you very much guys i hope this session has been extremely informative to you and i hope it helps someone out there to resolve their migration issues and stay tuned to more episode which i'll be releasing in a couple of days do not forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel if you have any question please drop in the comment section and i'm going to make sure that i address and answer all questions thank you very much bye